What you're looking at here is documentation I created for a medical billing software program and you can see down below on the status bar I'm on page 2 out of a total of 109 pages. And well actually my cursor is on page 2, this is page 3. And what you're seeing here is my table of contents. It lists all the headings throughout my entire document and the page numbers they can be found on. Now the table of contents will only pull in headings that Word identifies or sees as headings. And if you watch my styles training video, you know that you have to use the style headings, which again can be found up here on the home tab in the styles group. And there you go, headings 1, 2, 3, and so on. So when you want to use this advanced feature and have Word see headings throughout your document to be able to pull into your table of contents, when you go into your document and you select your text that you want to make it as a heading, well, you can't apply your own format. You have to apply one of these styles. And you can see it's in a hierarchical structure for heading 1, which is the main point. It's got larger font and it's bold. And then the sub point to the main point is not so bold and it's smaller. And then the sub to the sub to the main is smaller and not as bold and so on. And so you go ahead and select the text and apply one of these heading styles. And if you don't like the style, again, you can go ahead and right click on it and modify it. And that way you can make it, well, you can make it smaller if you'd like or change the color of it, the font type. In any case, again, you can watch my styles training video, but down in the table of contents, how it interprets that is that anything you see in bold on that page, like master file setup, page 22, has the heading one style applied to it. And then below that, the text dashboard has the heading style two applied to it. And then for heading three, indented, and below the heading two style is the import and create diagnosis codes. In fact, let's go ahead and take a gander. When you hover over the table of contents anywhere, you get the pop-up and it says if you hold down the control key and you click, it'll take you right to that. So if I do it for master file setup, hold down the control, you get the finger, click, whoa, it takes you right to it. Isn't that cool? I mean, when you print the document out, you can look in the table of contents and see over to the right the page number it's found on and flip to it, but come on, control click, that's a lot faster. Now you can see that when I click anywhere within the heading, that up here in the styles group, it's heading 1. And then the subheading to the main heading is heading 2. And for level 3, as an example, I have to scroll down a wee bit. The diagnosis codes, which is for master file setup, that's the subheading, heading 2. But to import and create, those are subheadings to the subheading. So when I click on importing, diagnosis codes are creating. You can see it's got the level 3 heading style and that will be pulled in to the table of contents as we saw because again Word recognizes it as a heading. So let's go ahead and go control home, scroll back down to the table of contents and let's go ahead and insert a table of contents. I know we got one here, I'll have to remove it, but before we do that actually when you come over here and you click anywhere within the table of contents it automatically highlights it and as you recall in earlier training videos anytime you click into some text and it highlights it without you clicking and dragging or when you click and drag and it does a double highlight so you have two shades of gray well as you recall and in this example the table of contents it means that the table of contents is a dynamic field meaning that it's updatable which is nice because if you make changes throughout your document like computer setup is not found on page 9 because you inserted some more pages in front of it or maybe you got rid of troubleshooting so it's just computer setup in any case, you want to be able to update that, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But first off, let's go ahead and remove our table of contents, and you can do that one of a couple of ways. You can either go ahead and click and drag, hit delete, and then, well, we got more. Click and drag, delete, and okay, that's taking too long. Instead, let me hit undo a couple of times. I can click anywhere within the table of contents, and then come up here and click on the References tab. Go to the Table of Contents group and click on Table of Contents. Yes, it's like we're inserting a table of contents, but let's not do that just yet because we want to remove. So go ahead and click on remove, give it a second, and it's gone. Now to insert a table of contents, well, let me come up here, click on the home tab, go to the paragraph group and turn on the codes because I want to see where I want to insert it. Okay, there's the page above, and well, let me insert it before that section break. The next page, let me hit enter several times. And if you'd like, you can type in a label for the table of contents. So when people look down below, they're like, oh, that's the table of contents. It's up to you. I'm going to insert my table of contents right there. 
but before I do it, I want to make sure that I turn off the codes. Because if you don't, as you recall in earlier training videos, that when you insert like the table of figures, table of authorities, or even the index, that you're going to get pagination errors, or there's a likelihood that you will. Because what it's doing is that it's revealing the codes or those items that you may have marked throughout your document, and when it reveals it, it has next to it that code. And so to reveal the code, it has to push the text to the right of it or below that, if it takes up enough space, down a line. And if it pushes it down enough, what you think is on page 3 may be on page 4. And so to make sure that you don't insert the table of contents incorrectly, you want to make sure that you turn off the codes so it collapses everything. And so it may be at the top of page 4, now it gets pulled up to the bottom of page 3. When I insert it, then I'll say it's on page 3. If I left the codes on and I inserted it, it would say it's on page 4, but in all actuality with the codes off, it's on the bottom of page 3, and so that's really messy. So make sure you turn off your codes. And then go ahead and insert your table of contents by coming up, clicking on the References tab, Table of Contents group, Table of Contents, and you can click on any one of these. It's the built-in. You have three. Just a simple click, and give it a second, and there you go. And you can do that, or let me click anywhere within it and come up here table of contents to remove it give it a second and let me come up here home tab turn on my codes make sure everything's grizzly now i got to turn off my codes again and the reason why i'm doing this again because when i go back to the references to table of contents don't you want to find out what the custom table of contents is about i knew you did neighbor let's go ahead and click on it because here, like the table of figures and table of authorities, it's the same in that you get the preview window, but you can tweak it so you can actually do something that's a bit more custom than the three default built-in templates. So you can see in the preview, if you want to show page numbers, leave it, uncheck it, disappears, let's show it. And if you do show it, instead of right aligned, you can go ahead and uncheck it and have it squished right up next to the heading. But I don't like that. Let me check it, and then a leader that leads your eye over to the page number, or no. So if I'm looking at your table of contents, and I'm looking at this heading, and I'm like, oh, it's on page 5. Okay, I exaggerate, but you get my point. I like my leaders to lead my eye. And then below that, you've got your different formats. You have from template, which is the only one that you can modify. So when I select classic, can't modify that. And you can see a preview of the classic, which you can tweak by adding a leader. Let me go back to from template, and if you want to modify that, go ahead and click on modify. And then it says please select the appropriate style for your index or table entry. I'll go with the default, click modify. You got your style window that we went over in greater detail in an earlier training video, so I'll refer you back to the styles training video. But in short, you can change the font type, the size, the color. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click cancel, go with the from template and then the levels. Now if you have more than three levels, like four, five, and six, and you want to include those, well then go ahead and make sure you include those in your table of contents. But if you do select all five and you actually only have two within your document, it'll only pull in those two. It won't leave a big gappage for you. In any case, I'm just going to focus on the three and click okie dokie. Cool. Let's go ahead and scroll back up to the top of the table of contents beautiful. Now let's see what happens when we make some modifications within the document and how we can update the table of contents. Let me go ahead and scroll down. Let's go to master file setup. Hold down the control key click to jump right to it. Now master files setup, the heading is on page 22. So with the cursor in front of it, if I hold down the control key and hit enter, those are the shortcut keys to insert a new page. So now it's on page 23. And then if I want to make a change to like, instead of dashboard, add an S, dashboards, alrighty. And then if I want to include something else into the table of contents, like place a service type of service, select it, and then come up here, click on the, well, you can either click on the home tab and choose your heading style, three, or on the references, you can say you want to add text to the table of contents. Right now it says don't show and I just have the three levels, so I can go to level three. When I select level three, 
okay, it selects the entire paragraph. I don't like that. Let me undo that, go to the Home tab, and with it selected, select Heading 3, and it just applies to what I have selected, not the entire paragraph. Whew. So keep that in mind, the differences between the two, but you can do it from the References tab. In any case, let's go ahead and go Control Home, and scroll back down, and to update our table of contents, just go ahead and right-click anywhere on it, and you get the Update field. Click on it, and you get two choices. You can update page numbers only, so if you didn't make any changes by applying additional heading styles to be included, that text within the table of contents, then just go ahead and do page numbers only. Click okie dokie. And so master file setup, what used to be on page 22, is now page 23. But if you want to update the entire table, that includes also the page numbers, then right click update field and say everything, man. And then click okie dokie, give it a second, and there you go. The S for dashboards and the place of service and type of service. Oh, and it also included the bullet point, which if you don't like that, then you'll probably want to go down there and not have that bulleted. And then right click to update it so it doesn't pull that in. In any case, I'll leave it as is. Now there's another way that you can add any text to your table of contents. That is, if you don't want to apply a heading style to it, and to do that, let me show you. Let's go back to the master file setup, hold down the control key and click on it. And let's say that I want to, I don't know, let's just select this text right here. Let's say that I want to include that in the table of contents. So instead of applying a heading style to it, because, you know, I don't want it to be bold and pop out if I want it to be at the same level as heading 1, what you can do then is with the selected, hold down the Alt key, the Shift key, and hit the letter O. And it has the entry here, which is what we have highlighted. And then the table identifier is C for the table of contents. And what level do you want it at? Level 1, 2, 3, well, let's do level 1. And then go ahead and click Mark. Close out. And you see what it's doing? Just like we saw in the index training video, you get these wavy brackets. And then the code that says TC to include the text in quotes into the table of contents. And so everything in between the quotes is going to be included. And at what level? Level 1. So if you want to update that, not include everything there, maybe just like to that point, or maybe we'll just add some dot, 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 like etc. Then make sure you do it within the quotes, because if you do it outside of the quotes, well, if you know enough about coding, go for it. But you're taking your chances. I'm just going to make my changes within the quotes because that's safe. And then when you're ready, let's go ahead and do Control Home and scroll down. And before I go ahead and update this, you want to turn off your codes because, again, the pagination thing. Remember, when we did the manual entry to include that text into our table of contents, how I added the code to the right of it, when that code got added, it pushes over what's to the right, below it or down a line. And if you get enough of those, it'll push everything over. So where you get to the end of, well, 112 pages, you may have what's on page 110 be now on page 111 with the codes on. But with the codes off, it would pull it back to 110. So you don't want incorrect pagination. So by all means, come up here and turn off the codes. And then go ahead and right click to update the entire table. Okie dokie. You know why we can't find it? Because when it comes to updating your table of contents and you actually did a manual entry, well, you have to do something additional manually to say that you want that manual entry into your table of contents. And it's not done through updating. You actually have to reinsert your table of contents. So to do that, let's go ahead and click anywhere within it. Well, instead of removing it, let's just go ahead and leave it as is. Come back up here, click on the References tab. Click on Table of Contents, and it's under Custom Table of Contents. Go ahead and click on it. We'll go with everything that we see here, and this time click on Options. And there you go. You have to manually check that you want your manual entries to be included, your table entry fields, into the Table of Contents. Go ahead and click Okie Dokie, click Okie Dokie. It's going to replace my Table of Contents with the new Table of Contents. Let's go ahead and scroll up to find it. And there it is.
master files transaction codes. Isn't that cool? Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.